friends of MIT 15390X, today we have a very special guest for you. In my mind, this person epitomizes the whole idea of hybrid innovation, going from one industry to another and taking lessons from one industry to another. This entrepreneur attracted over $100 million in investment money for his startups and generated hundreds of millions of dollars in market value as well. This person now coaches entrepreneurs at MIT and beyond and over the last 20 years of his entrepreneurial activity he's accumulated so much scar tissue that if you take all of that scar tissue you can shoot three more sequels of Scary Movie. This person never skips his mandatory weekly basketball sessions. You may have guessed by now this entrepreneur is none other than Mr. William Owen. thought you were getting somebody impressive but it's just me. Well, Bill, it's fantastic to be here. This is our office, this is our den, our cave. This is where the hard work happens, and I really wanted the students to see it. This is where we are on a daily basis, editing videos, interacting with you, having fun, working hard. And um, as we look back on the course, the students learned how to do market segmentation. They learned to select the beachhead market. They've learned to build their end user profiles estimate market size and finally they've come to this point where they're profiling their persona it's a very very good place to be what should they be doing next well first of all let me say it's great to be back here we've gone full circle it's great to be on the screen now with you um, together because we've kind of done it separately i feel like it's um simon and garfunkel or a lennon and mccarthy and the beatles or peanut butter and jelly maybe so but today what we're going to focus on is we're going to focus on now we have that persona. Let's figure out who are the next 10 customers. This will increase our confidence and our, our understanding of who the customer really is at a very concrete and specific level. And it's really important. I mean, it takes all these kind of general concepts and makes them very, very real so that they're actionable as we move forward into the next class too. All right, so the, the next goal for the students is to find their next 10 customers how should they do it? So how you do that is you go and you look, go back to your account profile uh, where you have your target customer profile and you say who else is there that looks just like our persona? Um, you can do it by industry, geography, by job title, but it better line up very similarly with the persona and also in full compliance with your target customer profile. So how do you do that? Well, now when we go, we can go to your persona and say, who else looks like you? What groups do you belong to? So they might belong to the Industrial Design Society of America Sculptors Group. Well, then you go to that group and you, you see who else looks like your persona. Interesting thing happens in this. Your persona was your first guess at you know, who the best representative and as we get 10 other customers, we might find someone who's an even better, we're spiraling and getting closer and closer to the, the truth here, who is a better persona than your first guess at a persona. And that happens all the time. There's nothing wrong with that. That, in fact, is a good thing because our persona is getting more and more refined. So throughout the class, we advocated uh, the idea that the line between you and the customer should become very fuzzy. Yes. Uh, very blurry and sometimes unclear where the customer is, where the company is. And so I think, you know, this is one of the key points is that you've got to leverage your persona because your persona becomes your champion. And then if you're thinking about, well, how do I find my next end customers? You go to your persona. That's why persona is so powerful as well. Yes. And I understand that the goal with finding the next end customers is you're still in inquiry mode, not advocacy mode. You're not selling them anything. Your goal is to test the assumption that they are going to be consistent with your persona. Yeah, absolutely. And I think this idea of not getting into advocacy mode is incredibly important because once we get there, we're no longer building the company from the customer back. We're trying to push out on someone a solution that we believe is in their best interest. And we're going to do that at some point later. But right now, before we do that, we want to get as much information as we can and build everything, not just the product, but the messaging, the, the, the way that we sell it, the way that we um, build our business model to capture and price it. All that stuff has to be built back from that. So the inquiry mode is incredibly important at this point, to stay in inquiry mode. So you are, you're learning, you're not selling anything. That's correct. 
there is uh, a psychological nuance here as you're going through the steps of market segmentation and selection of your beachhead market and user profiles and then finally the persona you can fall in love with your persona yeah. you can really get to relate to that person what if suddenly you start identifying other customers and they're not consistent with your persona well that's the whole point of disciplined entrepreneurship i mean it everybody likes to select markets that's the easy part of this the hard part is deselecting markets who are those people that you're not going to go after? And as Steve Jobs once said, I'm as proud of the things that we didn't do as the things that we did do. And as an entrepreneur, we don't have a lot of resources. We have to deselect those things that we're not going to do more than we actually select. So we can't fall in love with um, anything too much. Once we realize our persona and it meets the test that it's a big enough market that we can provide them a solution and that everything, all the planets line up, then we can start falling in love with them. But until such time, we're still in inquiry mode. The other bigger problem is, is that people fall in love with their idea of what the product should be or the product that they've built. This is a very, very dangerous concept. I refer this in uh, our, 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 our dangerous obsession with the MVP because once we start building something and then we get into advocacy mode, it's very, very natural for human beings. There was a great study that was done by Daniel Arelli from MIT where you know, they took origami and if I built, it's called the IKEA effect, yeah. if I built a piece of origami and then a master origami person built a piece right next yeah. to it, um, I actually believe that my piece is better than the master builder. Even though everybody else knows that this is a better piece, and it is a better piece, I believe this is because I'm emotionally vested in building this. And this is what we have to avoid. That's when we start getting bad signals and we start, stop getting close connection with our customer. I want to start um, going into the idea of uh, negative feedback. You know, it is very likely that our students, as they identify the next end customers, they will start getting negative feedback, mm -hmm. pushback from customers. I do not like that, I do like that, no I do not have this problem, I have that problem. When should you start getting worried about negative feedback? Because you shouldn't worry about all negative feedback. Mm -hmm. Well the first thing is negative feedback is a very good thing. Y you can do something about negative feedback. As I always say, I can deal with bad news, I can't deal with no news. So if something goes wrong, that's an opportunity to learn something very valuable so you don't make that mistake again. So negative feedback is extraordinarily valuable and you need to listen carefully to it. Now the question is, is when does it become too much? If all of your fundamental assumptions are being negated um, and, and the customers aren't going to buy your product under any circumstances, well that's not good. But usually it's a matter of, of getting all those planets aligned and that's you know, that's the key here. And when you first start, because we're, we're creating a company doing something that's never been done before, it's an innova innovation-driven enterprise, those planets aren't going to be lined up and we're going to have to line them up. And the negative feedback gives us the ability to push the planets and get them more and more lined up. Yeah.